G'day folks and welcome to tutorial 1 on 64-bit assembly. Uh, I've written a bit of a spiel here on why I use assembly called Who's Afraid of Big Bad Assembly? Uh, you can pause that and give it a read if you like. It's a bit too long for me to say but I really want to concentrate on showing programmers that x64 isn't a scary language at all. Uh, it's really easy, it's extremely powerful, it's ridiculously fast and uh, if most of you are familiar with uh, object-oriented programming languages only, then it's a real eye-opener. I'll be using Visual C++ 2010 Express Edition, which you can download free from Microsoft. But uh, if anyone cares, all of this stuff is easy enough to do in uh, Linux with the NetWide Assembler and the GNU compiler. Okay, off we go. Uh, I've got Visual C. If it's flashing, sorry about that. I don't know what that is. Something about the screen recorder. Okay, what we do, we go File, New, Project, Empty Project will do. I'm going to call it Tutorial 1. Okay. Now, we don't need these directories. I usually just delete them. Yes. And we're going to add our main C++ file. Main. Okay. We're going to include IO stream for seeing the output. We're going to include conio.h using namespace std into main get. That's what we got from conio.h. Return zero. Okay, so I just put get there so the Okay, first of all, we're going to do some um, inline 32-bit assembly. Uh, we're going to get a single value from uh, from a function with inline 32-bit assembly. Assum said get value from assum. End all. Okay, so we've got to write this function now, get value from assum, and it's going to return a single int and we're printing it out just to prove that we're getting a value from assembly int get value from assum here's our function now to get into 32-bit assembly or inline assembly all we do is we put the uh, underscore asm keyword and we open up a code block anything within these two braces is 32-bit assembly how do we return an integer from 32-bit assembly Oh, it's very easy. All we do is we move a value into EAX. EAX is a variable on the CPU. It's one of the registers. If you move 39 into EAX, by the time the function closes, um, that's what's returned. So mov EAX39 is functionally equivalent to that. Alrighty, now we run our program and see what happens. There we go. Assam said 39. Jolly good. That's just what we told him to say. Okay, that's 32-bit inline assembly. I'm not interested in 32-bit inline assembly. I want to show you guys how to do 64-bit uh, assembly. So the first thing that we've got to do is change our project from 32-bit to 64-bit. Default to 32-bit, so we've got to change it. We go up here to Solution Platforms. We click Configuration Manager, and in the Platform column, we click New, and everything should be selected here already to change our project to 64-bit. Um, copy settings from there, create new solution platforms, we click OK, and close. Now we have a 64-bit program. If we try and run it, bang, we've got problems. What's happened? Well, the kind folks over at Microsoft decided that inline assembly wouldn't be supported for 64-bit. So as soon as we change our project to 64 bits, we can't use inline assembly anymore. This whole function is gone. We've got to add an assembly uh, source code file to our project and compile that and link it. How do we do that? Well, the first thing that we've got to do is um, tell the program or tell the compiler that uh, it can't use the C++ compiler to compile assembly files. It's got to use uh, MASM, the macro assembler. 
and we do that by right clicking on our solution up here and clicking on build customizations then you should see a box here with Massim and uh, dot targets dot props we want to check that box that means whenever the compiler comes across a uh, file with a dot ASM extension it's to use the macro assembler to compile it instead of the C++ compiler ok so we check that box and we click OK now we're ready to add our assembly code file we do that by right clicking on tutorial and adding a new item just as before only uh, we select the C++ file here but down the bottom aha dot ASM we give it an ASM extension that way the macro, macro assembler compiles it not the C++ compiler we click add here we are in our new assembly file so how do we write this function in uh, pure x64 assembly? Well, it's in what's called the code segment, and the function's called get value from asm. It's a proc. It's a procedure. So we say proc. Then we've got our function body, which was and I'm moving something into eax. Move into eax that. And then it returns and it is called get value from ASM and P. So that's the start of our procedure, that's the end of our procedure, end P. And finally, that's the end of our uh, assembly code file. So that's the whole function. Almost the same as using inline assembler. We come back to our main file and we hit run. What's, what's happened? Get value from ASM isn't defined we're not linking it to our C++ file yet it's just compiled as an object file so we've got to link it how do we do that? well we say it's an external oh, sorry what we've got to do is add a function prototype to our C++ file so the prototype for this function is that it's external it returns an integer and it's called get value from awesome my friend there you go no worries, he reckons. It's all good. Alrighty, we hit play. Still problems. What's happened? Uh, well, what's happened is that C++ has mangled the name that it's looking for. Instead of looking for get value from ASM, uh, it's added things to this name uh, to reflect that the function returns an integer and that it doesn't take any parameters. This is called name mangling and uh, it's to do with the C++ calling convention, but we don't want it to mangle any names, so we've got to tell it that this function uh, hasn't got a mangled name, it's just called get value from ASM. We do that by saying that uh, it uses the C calling convention. C calling convention doesn't mangle names, so C++ will now be looking for exactly get value from ASM, which is the name of our function. Alrighty, we hit play. Now we go 2783. 2783. I think that's more than a coincidence. Let's have a look. There we go, folks. This is a 64 bit uh, assembly function and it's being called from a C program. Uh, in a later tutorial, I'll go through. Um, all of the parts of the 64-bit assembly program, but for now, uh, thank you for listening.